What's going on everyone? Today we are taking a look at the Bandit 4Runner, which is a fat tire e-bike. Taking a look at the specs, this has a 750 watt motor with 75 newton meters of torque, a 48 volt 14.5 amp hour battery, 26 by 4 inch tires, a Shimano 7 speed shifter, mechanical disc brakes, and a front fork suspension. Assembly was pretty straightforward and easy to do, so I will not be covering that in this video. If you would like to see how this bike is assembled, I've attached a link to the official Bandit assembly video in the description below. So taking a look at the bike itself, this one looks very similar to their Pacer e-bike I just reviewed a few days ago, but this one is just a little bigger and also has fat tires as well. I love the more square shape of the frame as it makes the bike look a little more rugged as opposed to the rounded off edges that a lot of e-bikes go for. The one I have here is in gray, but you can also get this bike in beige as well. So one of the features I really like on this bike, I already went over on the Pacer bike. So instead of repeating myself, I'm just going to drop in that clip here so you can see everything that the screen can do. All right, so we're going to start off with the most unique feature of this bike, which is the screen. It's definitely one of the best screens I've seen on an e-bike as it has very good resolution and contrast as well. Even the graphics are very well done and overall makes this bike feel more expensive and modern. This screen also has a few other unique features as well. So coming into the settings, you can actually set this bike to prioritize torque or speed. So if you just want to go fast, you'll set it to speed. But if you want to ride in a hilly area, then you'll set it to torque. So it'll power through hills a lot more easier. This is a very cool and useful feature and not something I have seen on other e-bikes. Lastly, here on the screen, you also have two modes of security. You can either set a password to unlock the bike or you can use an NFC card to unlock it as well. So when you first turn on the bike, you'll see the screen here and all you have to do is tap the included NFC card to the screen and that will unlock the bike. Again, very cool and not something I have seen on other e-bikes. So taking a look at the lights, this bike does have a built-in headlight as well as a tail light which lights up when you brake as well. Coming to the battery, this one does mount from the top which is the best way that I prefer. When it's mounted from the bottom, sometimes it can be a little tricky if the front tire is too close but from the top, it's just a lot easier thanks to all the space you have. Not only that, but you also don't have to crouch as much, which is something I appreciate as I'm getting older. All right, so our first test as usual. How easy or how hard is it to pedal without motor? This one definitely got some rolling resistance on it. I'm on gear two right now, but even then I'm struggling to pedal this. If I inflated my tires near the max, it'd probably be a lot easier, but as is, I'm definitely battling with these tires. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch off that motor. I mean, uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch on the motor and use this assistance that the bike has for me. Yeah, so I just reviewed their Pacer bike from Bandit Bikes. That one has a 500 watt. And uh, it was a pretty good 500 watt motor. This one has a 750 watt motor. So I'm uh, interested to see what kind of difference they have between the two of them. So let's go ahead and switch it to pedal assist one. Pedal assist one, uh, about 12, 12.5. Pedal assist two, about the same. So my pedaling was probably boosting up number one a little bit. Number three, definitely kicking on some speed. Looks like 16 miles per hour. Pedal assist four, losing traction, got to shift up, 18.8-ish. Pedal assist five, 21 miles per hour, about almost 22. Then this bike does have a pedal assist six as well. Catching up to this car, basically. about 26 miles per hour with casual pedaling all right this street i know is always pretty bad so let's go ahead and see how the suspension is yep combination of the fat tires and then the front suspension definitely soaking up these bumps no problem at all this street is very unbearable with a commuter e-bike with smaller tires but on this bike uh no problem. I don't know which mode I have this bike on. Uh, it has two modes, torque or speed. 
So if you have it on torque mode, it'll be a little less faster, but it'll give you more uh, low end torque so you can get up a hill better. And then in the speed, it's just gonna propel you forward, but not as uh, with much power. So it's definitely a nice feature to have. And like I said in my other review, it's not something I've seen on any other e-bike. Let's go ahead and give this top speed run another try. Well, not here because I got a stop sign coming up. And go. Twenty-eight miles per hour. And what's good, I, even at 28, I didn't feel very disconnected with the bike. A lot of these bikes, you go 28 miles per hour and you're ghost patterning like a hamster. But with this, I still felt very connected and was able to push this bike a little more faster using my legs. All right, so throttle only. The pacer was locked at 20 miles per hour. So I'm pretty sure this one's gonna give me the same thing. A lot of wind here, so it's taking a while to climb up. Yep, definitely hold you at 20. All right, oh, once again, I was on torque speed. But uh, with the other bike, I tested it, and torque and speed, it does change it. Like right here, it says torque optimized for torque, speed optimized for speed. But it does add more low end torque, but it doesn't change the top end speed. I was hoping it'll go a little faster when you set it to speed. I mean, it does get there faster, but it doesn't actually go faster. Just like the other bike, you just tap this on there and that unlocks the bike. So if you go to a store or something, all you gotta do is take these NFC cards with you, or you can also set the passcode. And I mean, someone's still gonna be able to steal your bike, but they're not gonna be able to enable the pedal assist. So somewhat of a security deterrent. I really hope one of these days, one of these bikes do the same thing like that, but instead of just disabled pedal assist, maybe they could have it where like the wheel locks up. So, you know, the wheel's just not gonna move. Then when you unlock it, it'll have like a little mechanical lever or something that unlocks the bike. That'll be uh, definitely a great security feature that I'm sure a lot of people would be willing to pay a little extra for. But this company did tell me that they have an, uh, an accessory coming out soon where it'll have GPS tracking on the bike through their app. Uh, I think they said about sometime in the summer, late summer is gonna come out. So definitely a little more added security there. I'm not sure if there's gonna be like monthly fees or anything for the GPS, but hopefully I'll find out and get to try that soon. All right, so the other bike had really good brakes. So let's go ahead and give this one a try. Oh, great brakes. I, I love these brakes. It's, I've tried a lot of bikes now with hydraulic brakes and usually they can get that rear tire to lock up no problem, but this one does it with ease. This is, this gotta be top three brakes of all e-bikes I've tried so far. I don't even think they're textural brakes. I don't know the brand on them off the top of my head, but you just push this and skids that tire no problem at all. I wish all hydraulic brakes were like this because I've tried some hydraulic brakes that are good, some better than the others. But this, like I said, is definitely up there. It's one of the best I've used in any bike so far. As expected, this is a great bike. I already tried the Pacer from Bandit, so I already knew off the top this was gonna be a good bike as well. But for the price, these are some great bikes. You get 28 miles per hour, which is more than most people need on the top end. You got a 15 amp hour battery. Again, it's more than most people need. That's gonna get you about 30 to 50 miles of range, so real world range, depending on how fast or slow you're going. But if you're going really slow, you might be able to push it to 60, but that kind of defeats the purpose of an e-bike. So realistically, you're gonna get about 30 to 50. Then you got this built-in NFC screen, which is not something I've seen on any other e-bike. It's color, not just basic color. A lot of these bikes, they say, oh, I got a color screen, and it looks like something from a Game Boy Color. It's like, ah. Eh. I mean, yeah, it's color, but it doesn't really matter if the screen looks all old and outdated, but this one has a color screen, but this is like legit, like cell phone quality right here. Like I can imagine if you hacked into this, you could probably pull up a video on YouTube and it'll look great. A lot of these bikes, they say color screen and it's like the little basic LED one. So 
in that case. And then with those screens, a lot of times they get washed out real easy in the sun as well. So when it comes to those kind of cheaper color screens, you might as well just make it black and white. And it'll be a lot easier to read. Oh, that was a, quite a big jump back there of a broken piece of street. It was a bump, but uh, it made me get some air. And uh, this bike definitely soaked it up. No problem at all. I did have to hop off my seat for a second, so I didn't want to feel that. But it didn't bottom out. I didn't hear no clinks and clanks, so suspension definitely seems to be working well. Yeah, so honestly, I have no complaints with this bike. Sometimes I have little nitpicks about these bikes. I mean, I do wish it went a little faster on throttle. It lets you go to that full 28 on throttle, but I mean, that's not to the fault of the manufacturer because they're just following the law. But I guess I like bikes that break the law. Maybe they'll release something that lets you uh, unlock it at your own, you know, your own risk or whatever. Some bike companies do do that. Hopefully they do, but beside that, uh, I'm happy with the bike. This is a great fat tire e-bike. So I know this company is fairly new. Until I uh, was about to review these bikes, I haven't heard of them. So I know some people might be a little sketchy about that, ordering from a new company they haven't heard of, but there's nothing to worry about on these bikes. These are definitely great bikes if this bike sold from a Venton or any other big company i'm sure they'll slap another seven eight hundred on top of it so if you're looking for a fat tire e-bike have no hesitation definitely recommend this one here from bandit bikes all right well that about wraps up this video as usual if you have any questions at all feel free to drop me a comment otherwise thanks for watching and i'll see you all next time